Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today I want to talk to you about different scissor types and when you're going to use them on the six different coat types. So today the scissor types that we're talking about are straight shears and curved shears. And the straight and shear, straight and curved shears that have a straight edge. So both edges are cutting edges on these shears. They're not thinners, they're not chunkers, none of that, more of that later. All right, so these are straight shears. You know that the blade is absolutely straight, has no curve. And then here is a pair of curved shears and you can see that the blade is curved. Um, and you, they come in different lengths, obviously, and you know, different lengths are personal preference and different lengths are used on different coat types or different areas of the body. And the amount of curve um, that you have in a shear is also personal preference and also different brands or different models within the same brand will have more or less curve to them. So again, personal preference or dogs that you may be trimming. So let's kind of just dive into it, right? So going through the coat types, if we move on to double coated breeds, right? So our Shelties, our Bernie's Mountain Dogs, St. Bernard's, those dogs that have that double coat. Um, the shear that I am most likely going to be using on them out of these straight bladed shears would be my straight shear, right? I don't use a shear that isn't a thinner, a chunk or a blender on a double coat a lot. I, you know, I very, you want them to have that more natural look and line to them. You don't necessarily want them to have a really blunt line. So I use a thinner or a chunker a lot on them, but I will use a straight edge shear, but typically it's the one with a straight blade with no curve. Um, and I use this on whiskers um, to trim around the feet and the pads of the feet. And I will use also a short straight edge shear to trim around ears, like on my Aussies and my Shelties, my Collies, um, things like that. I will sometimes use my straight shear to go in and set an underline. Um, and then, but then usually I follow up with my thinner to kind of make it look more natural. So on my double coated breed, I really don't have a need for a curved shear. That doesn't mean that I've never used a curved shear on my double coated dogs. It's just like, you know, my go-to shear would be a thinner followed by like a straight, straight edge shear. So um, moving on to drop coated breeds. So drop coated breeds is somewhere I would use both a curved and a straight shear. So I like to pick up all of the hair on my drop coated breeds and I like to trim around the feet with my curved shear. It just makes the job a lot easier, a lot quicker. Um, so I really do love that curve shear for that. And then if I'm doing like a Yorkie, a Maltese, something like that with that really long side coat that needs to be trimmed, that's when I'm going to use my straight shear. Typically I'm gonna use a blade that's as long as possible to do that. So like an eight and a half or nine inch shear because you know I'm gonna do it on the edge of a table and I wanna make as few scissor strokes as possible to get that edge to look as perfect as possible. So that's one coat type where I'd be using both a curve and a straight shear. Then of course we have scissored coat type, right? So our continuously growing coats, our poodles, our bichons, our Bedlington Terriers, Kerry Blue Terriers, and on that coat type, I'm using both. I'm using both all day, every day on kind of every single dog, right? So rosettes, pom poms on poodles, those front legs on my bichons. Um, basically the entire dog on a Bedlington, I'm going to be using a curved shear. Um, but then for the body work on my bichon, the body work on my poodles, my carry blue terriers, I'm going to be using my straight shear. So the scissored coat type, not surprisingly, is that coat type where you're gonna be using straight shears. And again, the length of the shear is personal preference, but for me, especially like once I, you know, had a lot of dogs to groom or got better at grooming, I'm picking a straight shear and a curved shear that are fairly long, right? So an eight and a half, nine inch curve, uh, eight and a half, nine inch straight. They just really help get the job done uh, quite quickly or, you know, uh, covering more acreage for the same amount of effort by you, which is obviously really helpful. Um, setter Spaniels, again, Setter Spaniels, those jacketed breeds, right? So they have like a jacket that you're stripping uh, typically in some sort and then like longer furnishings. 
Um, again, that braid, I'm probably going to stick to my straight shear and very rarely, if ever, use my curved shear. So again, I'm gonna use it for whiskers. If I'm not clipping them, I'm gonna use it for around the feet and the bottoms of the feet. And again, I might bulk in an underline, especially like on a Gordon, um, an American Cocker, um, an English Cocker, I'm gonna bulk it in with my straight shear and then follow up with a thinner on some of them to make them look more natural. So going back to what I previously said, on those American Cockers actually, I would be using my curved shear quite a bit, right? So I can be using to set those bevels. Um, you, a curved shear just really helps you get the job done a lot quicker, a lot faster. And using that curved shear from the bevel up into the underline, down the front of the front leg, a curved shear will just really make that job a lot easier. So again, setter spaniels, those jacketed coat types, both blades are being used. And I'm probably not using a longer blade. I'm probably using you know, like a seven inch blade on kind of that coat type because I find I just have a little bit more control um, and anywhere I'm using the blade, it's usually like not to do body work, it's kind of do more pre pre precision type work. Um, my smooth coated dogs, uh, strangely enough, you are gonna use a shear on a, a smooth coated dog. Again, I'm probably gonna, just gonna be using my straight shear, one that does not have a curve to the blade. I'm gonna be doing my whiskers, trimming around the feet. You know, you do get little nodules of hair that stick out that you can thinning shear off or take off with your straight shear, but there actually are quite a few areas that you would use a straight shear. Again, I'm probably gonna use a short blade, maybe a five inch blade on those short coated dogs, the smooth coated coat type, um, just to, you know, help tidy them up and get rid of those whiskers. And then lastly, our wire coated dogs. So a lot of our terriers, uh, we don't really use a straight bladed shear on. We're gonna use a thinner much, much more often. And again, if I was using a straight shear, it would be a, a, a normal shear with a straight blade. Again, I'm trimming the hair off the bottoms of the feet. I might do some general tidying up, but it's actually quite rare that you use a straight bladed shear on that wire coat type. And that's because as soon as you start cutting that wire hair, um, the hair comes in a different color, it comes in a different texture that's not desirable for that wire coat type. So again, it would just be very um, rare cases or rare instances or around the feet that you would use an actual shear with, a, with any kind of full blade on it. So the next time you're looking to use a shear with a full blade, so a blade that is not a thinner chunker blender fishtail, um, and you're looking, trying to decide whether you should buy a straight shear or a curved shear. And you're trying to decide whether you should buy a straight shear or a curved shear. Remember also, if you're just starting out, don't start out buying every scissor type that's out there, right? So um, you just start with a straight or a curve and just kind of like see how you use them. Try like that mid range blade. So seven and a half to eight and a half. Don't go really short. Don't go um, really long, especially if you're just starting out with those scissored coat types. So if this video helped you, but you want more education, you want to know more about what I'm talking about, head on over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. We have a lot of breed specific courses. Um, we have courses like on poodles, English cockers, Havanese, golden retrievers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, like some of the most popular breeds out there. We have tons of scissoring tutorials, um, videos and full courses on how to scissor your dog as well. We have a course called Breed Specific Grooming that talks about the best equipment from dryers to shears to shampoos to po lotions, potions and sprays, whatever you would use on that. So whenever you're looking for further education, we get a ton of questions at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and it's our job to educate you on any question that you might have around grooming. And we do that through our full length courses. So I invite you to head on over there and check it out. Thanks so much. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought. And as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free premium and subscription content and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.